see it does it in 45 degree increments. You might want your uh, nose to be that sort of shaped. So clicking the either the center or the edge, move it around, get into position, resize it, rotate it around so you've got a nose. It doesn't have to be the same as my nose. I wanted mine to be flat on the bottom. So I'm going to try and rotate it using the magical rotation. Make sure it's big enough. Get it to overlap quite a bit in the back here. Okay, I'll show you why in a second. Arrow keys just to tab it down. Drag it so it overlaps a bit more. Why? Because I want to change the kind of a roundness on the end. Okay, so I'm going to grab this little corner option, the little target there, and drag it in. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Drag that corner in. You can see it down to all sides. You could do our secret trick move where you click on it once and just do it individually, but it's a little bit easier just to hide these in here. We're going to make both the nose black and his little body black. So I want to reuse this. I'm going to have it selected. Okay, with my back arrow, I'm going to edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay, and I'm going to put this down here. There you go. Messing about. That looks like a good flipper to me. Copy and paste it again. I am going to rotate it around. I just use Command C and Command V on a Mac. You can use Control C and Control V on a PC. There we go. Now you'll notice I'm trying to line it up down the bottom here. It does some clever stuff where it tries to like automatically line up. If yours is not doing that, it's called Smart Guides. It's under View. And you can see my Smart Guides is turned on. It's got a little tick next to it. Okay, it just means it tries to line things up automatically for you. And that's super handy. It can also be a bit of a pain as well. So you can go to View and to untick it if you're not liking all that jumping around lining up stuff. Some people don't. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is this body. I should have done it earlier. Again, okay, when we had the rectangle tool, but I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to hover. You can kind of see it says path. That just means I'm going to start bang on the edge of his body here. It's really handy. It's one of those smart guides. Okay, I'm going to say click, hold, and drag. I get my rectangle. Don't worry too much about the stroke around the outside. Remember, black arrow. I'm going to grab this guy, click him once, drag him down to match. And same with this one. I'm going to click him and drag him up to match my... That's probably why I didn't do the little belly earlier on. I'm just adding more kind of things that could go wrong for us. So I'm going to try and line it up. Actually, I'm going to bring it. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> That's why I didn't do it. So we've got the body. Let's do the feet as well. So I'm going to do the foot with the rectangle tool. Grab just that corner with my black arrow. I don't actually have to go to my black arrow. It's just a good habit to get into. Click on it once, drag it down. What I'm going to do is copy and paste them. So Command C, Command V, two of them. And I'm going to try and line them up. It's pretty good at lining them up depending on which corner you grab it. So you'll notice that if I grab the center here, oh, it intersects. Very good. Nice. He's got two little feet at the bottom. All right, let's look at a couple of the other drawing tools. Uh, we're going to use just the regular old straight line. Okay, the line segment tool. Uh, it's a fancy word for just drawing a line. And all you do is click, hold, and drag. Okay, click, hold, and drag. Those are two little, I'm not even sure what they are, little feathers out the back of his head, but um, what I'd like to do as well is change the width of this. Okay, I'm going to match maybe this. So I'm going to remember it was four point, I think we used for that. And we changed the capping. Okay, so what I want to do is do both at the same time. So what I'm going to do is go to edit, undo, undo, until it was kind of back to the same shape it was. So like we did with the corner options, we can select more than one at a time. And it's that same key. So I have my black arrow, I have the first one selected, then I hold down shift and click in the middle of the second one. So I have both of them selected at the same time. Now over here in stroke, I'm going to say I'd like you to be four point, and under stroke, I'd like to change from that one <laughs> to that one. All right, let's look at the last, well, last kind of new thing I want to show you. We'll draw that, we'll draw the rectangles and stuff for the water and the weeds, but this one here, why did you get a sheriff badge is, it's <laughs> only purely so I could show you how to draw a star and a polygon. Okay, you know how to draw a polygon probably. Okay, click hold uh, the rectangle tool. We saw it before, polygon. And it remembers the last setting. So the last time we used it, we said be three sides. So it's kind of defaulting to that now. So what we're gonna do is remember just click once out here, put it back to what it was, which was five sides. Click okay, and we get our pentagon, I think. Octagon, no, pentagon. 
I want to lock in pentagon, okay, and I magically got mine the right size. If you don't remember, grab the edges here, hold down shift while you're dragging those edges, it will lock the height and width, and just kind of move it in by grabbing the edges. Okay, here we go. If it's the wrong fill and the wrong stroke, with it selected, you can go and change the fill to none in the stroke there. Let's do our star. So the star is that there is an actual star tool. So click and hold down the this little kind of shape group and grab the star tool. And if you click hold and drag out, you'll get just a regular star. To adjust the star, I'm going to undo it, click once, and you can decide on how many points it has and how pointy they are. Just mess around with the different radiuses to experiment with it. It's hard to describe. But mine one's fine the way it was. I'm going to leave everything by itself. I'm going to cancel and just draw a star. Now to lock it into like a perfect kind of horizontal and vertical, hold shift. Remember that magical tool. When in doubt, probably hold down shift. Grab the black arrow, click hold and drag, get it close, hold down shift, grab one of the corners, drag it out. We're getting good at this, right? All right, what I'd like to do is make sure that you, it will try its very best to align these perfectly. Okay, if you're like, I know it's not aligned perfectly. So what you can do is select both of them. Remember our trick, have the star selected. Which key do you hold down? That's right, shift key. Click the center of this uh, pentagon. And what you'll see over the side here is that you've got your align options. So I want to make sure they're aligned horizontally center and vertically center. And they are perfect already. <laughs> I'm going to move mine off. Hold shift, grab both of them just to show you what it actually does. Now they are perfectly center. So I'm just going to kind of move mine way off so it makes it a bit more clearer what we're doing. So I'm going to make sure it's horizontally center and vertically center. I can never remember which is which, so I just click both. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it. I've got them both selected. And I'm going to hold down shift key. I want them to be a lot smaller. So space bar to move along. Grab the one of the edges. Hold down shift to get it to a kind of a, I don't know, sheriff badge size. All right, last couple of things we're going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can put in, that is meant to be the ground and that is meant to be the water, <laughs> if you weren't sure. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, I'm going to click hold and drag, and I'm going to get close to this edge and it's going to go meow. That happens all the time where you kind of just get close to it and illustrate a kind of, I don't know, you get lost this way. So I've got this giant rectangle. To get back, okay, we can go to view and just go to the one that says fit all in window. It kind of gets you back to home base. Command zero on your keyboard. Okay, on a Mac or Control Zero on your keyboard is a really common shortcut to do the same thing. Otherwise, just go to View and go to the one that says Fit Artboard to Window or Fit All to Window. Okay, we'll get back to here. I'm going to delete with my keyboard or go to Undo to get rid of the giant rectangle. And I'm going to draw one that kind of goes just to the edges here. Another one. And I'm going to draw in my circles. And I'm going to cheat a little bit with the circles. I'm going to draw a circle. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to copy and paste it instead of drawing lots of them. And then resize them. That's not even cheating. <laughs> it takes just as long. Uh, maybe even just easier drawing them. Holding shift, maybe to get a perfect circle. Yeah, okay, that first way is easier. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some color. Well, actually, I forgot the tuft of grass. I'm just going to use my, remember, the arc tool. So here you go, arc tool. It's going to be a bit of rotation going on, so uh, maybe not. That'll do. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. All right, we're going to come back and look at strokes in a bit more detail to maybe give these a little bit more prettiness, but for the moment, that's going to do for me. What I'd like to do is add some fill colors, because at the moment, these, I don't know, weird shapes and sizes, so we're going to have to work our way through adding fills, mess messing with strokes, resizing strokes, grouping arranging and we'll do all of that in the very next video. All right, I'll see you then. Hi there. This video we're going to take our drawing from the last video and do this to them. We're going to color them in, but along the way we're going to learn how to use grouping, arranging, what isolation mode is, all sorts of fun stuff. Let's get started. All right, let's look at grouping, arranging. We're also going to color them in. If that sounds real simple. Hang around because there's things like isolation mode that you really need to understand before moving on.
All right, so first up, let's turn off our trace layer. Okay, it was useful for getting us here, but we don't need it anymore. So under your layers panel, let's just turn the eyeball off. Okay, or this like little icon here, the first icon in the layers panel, we don't need it anymore. You can click on it and hit the trash can way down the bottom here. Okay, and that'll just get rid of it. Um, I'm just going to leave mine there. I'm going to undo. Just turn it off. So let's first of all look at grouping and then isolation mode. So I'm zooming in. I want to do a couple of things. I want to grab my pentagon and I want to give it a black fill. So I'm going to click on fill, make it black. I'm going to give the stroke a none color. We have a small problem as they're now star. You can see if I use my black arrow, I can just hover above and eventually find my star by just clicking the little blue line that appears. It's there, but because it's black on black and it has no center, it can't be seen. So let's have a look at fixing that. So stroke, I don't want any stroke on it. And the fill, I would like this option here for white. Cool. So I want to group these two. So I need to select both of them. So I'm going to click the, sometimes you can't click both. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. It makes it a little easier to click individual items when they're really close. So I've clicked on my pentagon. Okay, I'm going to hold shift and click on my star. So I've got them both selected. So what I want to do is group them so that they kind of stick together. Okay, so I can go up to object and go to this one that says group. There it is at the top. All that means now is if I click off in the background and I click back on just either one of them, they're both kind of connected. It's not forever. Okay, I can go to select and go to ungroup and that will separate them up again. But that's how to group them. Grouping is handy. One thing you will run into is something called isolation mode. And this is where most people get lost in Illustrator. The people that I teach, quite a few of them are double clickers. They love double clicking stuff. So what happens is, I don't know, we know from lots of programs you've got to double click things. But if you double click things in Illustrator, everything goes wrong. So watch this. If I double click the star, double click. Okay, what happens is it's weird. The background grays out and I can't, I can still work on these guys, but I can't work on the background anymore. All that's happened is you've entered something called isolation mode. Um, the way to really tell is up the top here, can you see this thing? This gray bar here didn't appear before. I'm going to go back out of it by clicking this arrow twice. Okay, so I'm back out of it. Watch that. It'll appear up here. I'll move <laughs> so it's easier to see. If I double click on this, I this little bar appears and everything else that's not in that group is kind of blanked out. Why do we have it? It's mainly to confuse everybody that I'm teaching, but it actually has a really good use. It means that when I'm back out of here, so I've got these things to, together, but I want to kind of move them. I want the star in a different position to the pentagon. So instead of going to ungroup and then moving around and then regrouping them, what you can do is just double clicking them and think of it as going inside that group. We've kind of dived inside. Everything else is grayed out. It's not important now. We're inside this group. Okay, now these guys are separate again. So I can go, actually, I want my star to be, I don't know why, but you want it down there. And what means is I can click this arrow to go back to layer one and then all the way out to exit isolation mode. Just keep smashing away at that little arrow until it goes away. And now there's still a group Okay, but you are able to dive inside and change it. So I'm going to dive inside again, grab it, stick it back roughly in the middle. Roughly enough, I'm going to select both of them and arrange them. And again, you can keep clicking on the arrow to go back or double click the background. That kind of jumps you out like a bit of a quicker shortcut. So if you ever get lost and think you're like, man, that thing's not working, it's not locked, or um, from inside of here, you can see a lot of these things don't work. These menu items, they're all grayed out. Because we're in this kind of like special world, isolation mode. Double click the background to come out. Everything will come back to normal. So if you're lost, click the arrow, double click the background, and you can come out. Hopefully you can see the use of isolation mode. Let's look at another thing. So I'm going to work on both of these little feet here. I'm going to click on this. We're going to click the edges member of this foot. I'm going to click fill. I'm going to pick an orange just randomly from in here. And I'm going to have stroke of none. I'm going to pick this fella. This other foot, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use a slightly darker orange. Okay, and I'm going to have a stroke of none. Now the trouble is, is that this one that I want kind of at the back is in front of my front foot. Just because I drew him last, okay? But if you draw, it ends up on top of the last things. So what I can do is I can select them, I can go to arrange, and I can go to send to back. There you go. That's how to arrange things. We're going to do lots of arranging now. So we're going to get the layer order all right. You can use layers, but in Illustrator, unlike something like Photoshop, you generally only have one layer that you work on. You can have more. But because these are all kind of individual vector objects in Illustrator, it allows you just to kind of arrange them and bring them to the front. If you want this guy at the front now, I can click on Arrange and say Bring to the Front. Arrange and send it back. One other really useful thing to know before we go through and start coloring this stuff is that, watch this. If I grab my penguin, I'm just grabbing all the penguin bits. Okay, so I've just dragged a box. Instead of holding Shift, okay, and Shift clicking it all, that would work. 
Okay, it'll be there for a long time. What you can do with your black arrow, just click, hold, and drag a box kind of roughly around. Can you see I haven't covered the feet? Because I don't want that uh, rectangle at the bottom, which is my ground. I'm going to go just above there. And because I've overlapped those last little objects, it should select them all. That's one way of doing it. What I'd like you to do is, by default, I can't exactly remember whether it's on or off. I'm going to show you both ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down. So I've got everything selected. I'm going to hold my shift so it scales it proportionally. Grab the corner. I'm going to scale it right down to be a teeny tiny version of my penguin. So weird happens, right? Okay, all of the strokes are, they don't scale down proportionately. Okay, that is still like a nice solid, where's my eye in the middle here? Maybe we made him four point, he's still four point. So I'm going to undo. So there's going to be times where you need that to scale down, where you want these strokes just to remain the exact size you told them to be. So to do that, let's click off in the background, got nothing selected. There's this option here, it says scale, stroke and effects. Okay, so with nothing selected, you can turn on and off. You'll be turning it on and off reasonably. For me, I turn it on and off quite often. Okay, so I've got it off. I'm going to drag and grab all of these guys. I'm going to shrink them right down. To be a little mini penguin. And you see all the strokes came along for the ride. Other than to see a tiny penguin, <laughs> I only wanted to show you that little technique, okay, before we move on. So I'm going to undo so he's back to his regular size. When would you want to use this? Let's say that you're drawing something that's a bit more...